everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today I get to show you guys an amazing Lego creation. This is a custom build of the T-800 designed by the incredibly talented builder Martin Lotta. Now the T-800 is way more commonly known as the Terminator, and this incredibly deadly robot comes from the Terminator series that came out in the 80s. I still think Terminator 2 is like one of the best action movies of all time. It still holds up today. I highly encourage you guys to watch the movie if you haven't seen it already, but chances are if you clicked on this video, you probably already have. Now, killer robots are nothing new in the sci-fi or action genres of movies or stories, but there's something about the T-800 that really stands the test of time. It's kind of this chromed out skeleton. You can see all of the working pistons. It looks like a lot of the body is actually controlled by some sort of hydraulic power. At least that's how the joints move in and out. And in that way, it kind of rests between a somewhat believable design and also just incredible incredibly menacing. The T-800 was of course immortalized by being covered in the organic human disguise of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And anyways, I'll get more into the details of this robot in a second. But first, let me tell you guys, if you want to build this Lego design yourself, you can find the instructions at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. There you can get the PDF step-by-step -step instructions as well as a digital parts list for quickly and easily uploading the pieces that you're going to need to order online. Buying instructions from our web store is a great way to help support us here at the channel so we can keep doing this as well as the amazing designers that we work with like Martin here. I definitely suggest you check us out. We are linked in the description below and we only include the most high quality models out there. Now getting into the specifics of the T-800 bust that we have here, it's just over 3,000 pieces. And in order to give you guys an idea of how big this model is, which it is pretty darn large, uh, I compared it next to the UCS Slave 1 Lego set, and they're almost exactly the same in terms of height, width, and depth. So as a display piece, it is certainly a pretty hefty build, but I'm glad to say it's actually not that delicate of a model, despite the fact that it is, of course, primarily supposed to be used as a display piece, obviously not really for play. And that being said, it does have some really fun power functions that you will want to play with. First things first, Martin has included the red glowing eyes. They're a pretty easy function. I actually really like it because it's just so accessible. There's this little thing on the side of either side of the head that you can twist, that little two by two round plate, and it slides a little piece forward that turns on both of the red eyes. When it comes to the two red light bricks that we got, uh, one obviously has a little bit more battery than the other, though it's really easy to change the batteries out from those bricks. And ultimately, the final look of the red glowing eyes of the T-800 is just amazing. When this thing's left in the studio in the dark, it's like the most intimidating and creepy looking thing that we have in the studio by far. It used to be Darth Maul. Now it is definitely, definitely the T-800. And this is, I think, for sure my favorite part about the model because really there was something so amazingly scary about this uh, robot. These Terminator movies were almost kind of like monster movies. So the first one, this is the bad guy and he really is scary when he doesn't have the flesh. And then the second one, you've got the monster on your side. Its overall look is just very eye-catching and sort of alluring. Now for the second major function, if you turn the bust around, you can open up the back. I'll get into the display stand a little bit more in terms of the fun build details, but you open up the back door and there you can see the motor on the right hand side and the battery pack on the left hand side. It works just like you might think it would. I don't usually keep the side doors on battery packs if I have a choice, uh, but yeah, you can switch the switch either left or right and that changes the direction of the head, whether you're putting it left or right. I will say that there is a little bit of delay between uh, moving the head one way or another way. My guess is the primary Technic cross piece in the middle might uh, just be twisting a little bit. So when you switch it back and forth, it takes just a little bit of time for the gears to kind of catch up with the head movement. But at the end of the day, it's a really fun, solid little function and you can just put the battery pack uh, back into the body of the build without any hiccups. Now getting into some of the fun build details, let's take a look at the front of this display. I really like how Martin put a bit of extra effort into the main display of the uh, or the stand really of the bust. You can see T-800 completely brick built in the front here. And on either side, you have a collection of little skeleton, minifigure skeleton pieces uh, that kind of out 
outline a bit of the terrible robotic destruction that sort of outlines the post-apocalyptic world of the future that this guy is, of course, based from. On either side of the Model 2, there's a bit of just fun monochrome, you know, nice dark bluish gray mechanical building on either side. It's just great. He really did not skip out, I would say, on any of the stand detailing. But let's move up to the main body of this guy so you can get a closer look at maybe some of how these interconnections work. First off, I got to say, this is one of the builds where uh, the snot technique or studs not on top, that very nice smooth building technique, completely makes sense when you want to build a T-800. This thing is a chromed out skeleton after all. So the fact that the building technique is very smooth and very clean uh, makes perfect sense and it really does lend to the accuracy uh, and overall just good interpretation of how this model should look in Lego form. Now here is a closer shot of how the neck will turn back and forth there's a couple of pieces that kind of have a little bit of looseness there you can see how some of the other parts move around and kind of track along the neck it really kind of has a uh, sort of organic feel as to how the head would move back and forth on the body and then you can also see that the mouth opens and closes this is not a mechanical function but it's on a couple of nice stiff ball joints that have enough friction so you can open it and have it stay open and close it and have it stay closed much of the pistons are made from two by two round bricks and you can see a lot of that uh, inner column that goes from left to right is made of a series of different tire pieces or the inner tire plastic piece that the rubber would go around. Funny enough, Martin did use a few rubber tire pieces to attach a few of those outer pistons. You can see the little black rings that are clipped on to little clip pieces in fact it's just kind of a clean easy way to hold those pistons in place uh, when otherwise those connections wouldn't be as easy to do also there you can see the head movement again you can see where some of those uh, other pieces kind of track into the body a bit and when you look even closer you can see uh, quite a few little flexible pieces that have been added to the neck for extra detail moving the head back and forth here really does make this mechanical creature or this mechanical humanoid uh, robot look a lot more alive when it comes to the detailing of the head, this is just kind of a slow but sure little uh, 360 degree rotation around for the skull. You can actually take the skull completely off and do a rendition of Shakespeare if you wanted, but really the details that make up this brick built mechanical skull are really fun. There's just a tiny little indent piece used there. It looks like this guy got shot in the head or banged in the head at some point. And there's that little flat dish piece to show a dent. And now let's take a closer look at the back of the build as well, because this bust looks good from all angles. You can see there's a bit more flatness to it. Those are the shoulder blade pieces, or the build that makes up the shoulder blades, I would say. And as you cross from one shoulder to the next, you can still see dish pieces and two by two round bricks for more pistons, as well as a lot of tile pieces that smooth out all of the uh, little places that normally would have bricks. Now this is what the head turning motion would look like from the back. I think those two larger piston pieces on either side I'd really outline the motion of the head turning the best here and because the gears are still engaged you can disengage the gears if you want so the head can move a little bit more loosely or easily but I kind of like that resistance uh, it's just really fun to move the head back and forth I just I every time I walk by this thing in the studio I'm constantly turning the eyes on and off and turning the head back and forth uh, which is I think a good testament to how well this model is built often custom builds are a little bit delicate and you don't want to mess around with the motor functions or you don't want to mess around with the special features too much because you might break something off. This is not that type of build. In terms of moving this model around, it's not delicate. I actually don't have any shots of me like carrying it across the room and it's a little bit too big for me to like build. I've got it pushed all the way back in the light box right now so I can't really pick it up easily from this angle but Needless to say, it is actually quite a strong model. The base is extremely sturdy, and uh, I don't feel like I need to treat this thing gingerly at all when moving it from one place to the next. To date, as of the making of this video, this is by far, by far the best bust of anything we have built. It definitely beats out those brick-built versions of helmets or uh, the Darth Maul face like I mentioned earlier, and I have a feeling this is gonna be one of our favorite things 
to put on display just because of its amazing build technique and its uniqueness. It really is intimidating and very scary to walk in on in a dark room. So I personally couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. All right, I think that is just about everything I've got to say about the T-800 Terminator bust. Remember guys, if you wanna build this thing yourself, you can. The instructions are for sale at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. It's a great way to help support us here at the channel as well as Martin. And remember guys, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Let me know what kind of mock or custom Lego creation you'd like to see us do in the future. And all right, that's it. So thanks so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.